Okay, so Ace Magic have sent me this 15 inch Windows laptop and so far I've been really impressed with it. It's nice and snappy, very responsive and has great features for the price. Let's have a look at what else came in the box. So we got a user manual, a power supply with a fairly small barrel jack but I've definitely seen a lot smaller. So this is 19 volt, 2.1 amp, 39.9 watts and a box and in the box was this I just switched it off when I pressed the power button so it comes with this keyboard and the reason for that is that the native keyboard is the American one so this basically is for the UK now I had this same sort of arrangement with another Ace Magic laptop so it's obviously what they do for the UK and I did think at the time that it was going to fall off or it wasn't going to be very comfortable or anything like that. I haven't really found that. I mean, I would rather it was a native keyboard that was printed on. But this has actually worked very well on my wife's laptop, the 17-inch one I reviewed a while back. And you don't really notice it. It definitely stays in place. It's not falling off or anything like that. Now one of the first things I check on a Windows laptop is the trackpad and how responsive it is and how nice to use for multi-touch gestures and things like that. And my expectations got a lot higher since I had this 2010 MacBook. Now this has got a glass trackpad and it's very, very responsive. And I'm pleased to say that this one doesn't disappoint. So if I launch the web browser, you can see that straight away Everything comes up nice and fast. If I wanted to zoom into something, pinch to zoom works absolutely fine. If we open some web pages here, so let's go with YouTube. Let's also go with BBC Sport, because that's got lots of images in it. Uh, let's open another tab and we'll go with Hot UK Deals. And grab that as well. So you can see here, not struggling with lots of images on a web page. BBC Sport will have even more. And you see how fast it comes up as well. It is responsive, even though, and I'll show you the low price of this at the minute. Uh, so pinch to zoom, yeah, nice and responsive. And with YouTube, so if we put in 4K HDR, Lee PSP video. I've got a demo video I often use. There we go. So let's launch that. Let's go full screen. I skipped the advert. I had to cut that out because it was playing music. Uh, so let's launch that for nerds. And we can see that it's not dropping frames. Although we're not at 1080 at the moment. 360. Right, let's go for 4K. Yeah, straight into it. Sound-wise, not the bassiest of speakers. I mean, certainly there's some volume there, uh, but it is a bit tinny, which is to be expected on a laptop, really. Uh, I don't think I've heard, well, actually, my M1 MacBook sounds pretty decent, but, uh, you know, most laptops don't sound great. Picture-wise, good, though. It's a nice screen. Holds up fairly well from an angle. But yeah, nice and bright. I don't know what the brightness level is. I've just left everything on default. Oh, so it's full brightness at the moment. Here you go, if I go all the way down and all the way up. And you can do that with the function keys. So you can see we've got volume control here. We've got brightness control here. Uh, we've got Wi-Fi, mute, sleep. There's also a function to disable the trackpad. Some people don't like the trackpad and they use a mouse, so you can disable this. Right, let's have a look at the specs on Amazon's listing. So there's an older version of this uh, with the N97, but it's only got eight gig of RAM for 219. I, I mean, the prices on Windows laptops, have, it's weird. Everything else seems to get more expensive. These are going down in price. So this is the new one, a 15.6 inch with the N150. I really like this processor. I've got it on some mini PCs and it's really low energy, but nice and snappy. So we click on the listing. What have we got in the images? So 5,000 milliamp hour battery, Intel N150, and the display is 1920 by 1080 full HD. And we've got four cores and four threads, 
and it turbos at 3.6 gigahertz. Now it's DDR4 RAM, I would rather it was DDR5 RAM, which the N150 does support, but at this sort of cost, you can't have everything. And DDR4 is still fine, still perfectly usable, just DDR5 feels a bit more snappy. Oh, and it is a removable drive, it looks like, and it looks like the RAM is removable. I'm gonna take it apart in a minute and have a look inside. What else we got here? Stereo speakers, mic, one megapixel webcam. Well, let's have a look at that. Camera's at a funny angle at the moment. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. We're used to decent cameras on smartphones these days, so laptops are always a bit disappointing. But that's perfectly usable for like a Zoom meeting or Teams. So Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi 5, metal body. It does feel pretty premium. 17 millimeter thickness and 1.65 kilograms. And they talk about all day battery life, but they don't say how long. It does seem pretty good. I've been using it on battery for quite some time. Uh, I charged it up fully yesterday and I've been doing updates. I was trying some games. I was trying some different operating systems and yeah, it's still got 37%, so an hour and a quarter. So let's just launch a few things just to show how well it copes with various different things running. I installed the Opera browser as well, Copilot. So where's the multi window? This one, isn't it, on Windows? I used to, too many different operating systems. So we go to the Microsoft Store and we can see that we can scroll up and down through that. And then what else have we got here? So we've got our files here and I was messing about with files, that's why it's in that weird format. And back again. So Windows 11 Pro is installed, and if we check activation, you can see Windows is activated with a digital license. Right, let's have a look at the connections, because they weren't really shown very much on the Amazon listing. I mean, it tells you what they are. It doesn't show any close-ups. So we've got power, we've got USB-C, and I'll test what functionality that's got in a second. Uh, HDMI, so full size HDMI, USB 3.2, another couple of USB 3.2s, and a micro SD card slot, and a headphone jack. Let's have a look inside. So it looks pretty straightforward, just a load of tiny Phillips screws. Are there going to be any underneath stickers? Let's find out. Oh no, that's it. Oh, really simple. There's obviously this nice big vent here for cooling. We've got a NetAC 512-2280 drive, just a single M.2 slot in here. And here's our RAM, so again, single RAM slot. We've got our fan, which I haven't really been aware of yet, but I guess if I try some gaming, I can get it running. I've got some M.2 drives, might try putting one in. In fact, I haven't shut this down properly yet, so before I do that, I'm just gonna loosely pop that back on and properly shut it down. Folds back really quite far, if that's useful to you. So shut down, and shut down. I did like not having to lever that up or anything. It came off very, very easily. And I've got several 2280s here. One of them has got Bazite on it, which is like SteamOS. So Linux, there we go but runs the SteamOS gaming system. So let's take that one out. It's so nice to have removable components in a laptop. It's definitely going in the opposite direction at the moment. And computers are just, everything's, you know, the RAM and the storage is just soldered in, which is really annoying if you want to upgrade or replace something. And this is a matte finish screen, so it's not particularly reflective, which is good. Okay, launching Bazite. And I'll plug in a dongle for a controller. Now, I usually use an Xbox One controller, but so that there's no configuring or Bluetooth or anything, I just use this because it's set up straight away. I can't remember what I've got on here. So you can see I've got the Heroic Games Launcher. Got Steam on here. And we're not connected to Wi-Fi, so let's test if the Wi-Fi is working in this. And the reason you might use Bazite is people have been saying that they're getting better frame rates from Linux gaming, especially on things like the Steam Deck. So if you can get a few more frames a second, that's a great thing. So did I install anything on this before? So ready to play. WRC7. Oh yeah. 
Obviously, because this is a 512 drive, I could have Linux and Windows on this. On a dual boot configuration, there's plenty of room on there. Okay, we're off to Portugal. Still haven't had any fan noise yet. Okay, frames per second is looking low. I might need to lower some of these settings on here. I think I was using an AMD mini PC before. Yeah, okay, 12 FPS isn't good for a racing game. So, all we have to do is just play around with the video options. If it will let me, I'll drop it down to 720. V-Sync off. It's on high at the moment, so I'm going to go low on everything just to try it. Oh, now we're talking. Oh, oh. <laughs> and I've changed the camera. How do I change the camera? Oh, I don't like this in, in the car camera. Ah, here we go. Right, I'm sure the car's fine. Oh, God, it's tight. So 30 FPS, perfectly playable. Lots of the early Xbox 360 races were 30 FPS. <laughs> it still looks uh, quite nice, actually, the reflections and everything. <laughs> right, let's, let's concentrate a bit. I'm sitting off to an angle. That's my excuse. Oh, it's very unforgiving, the, um, the rocks on the side. Right, let's try and listen to my co-pilot. Yeah, they're all rocks either side. That was better. So if I press the Xbox button, I think it's once or twice, just once, it goes into big picture mode. So now if I've got this plugged into my television, I can have the laptop to the side or close it down or whatever, and I can select various different games from here. Now what else are we gonna be able to run on an N150? I'm gonna try that Doom demo, that was amazing. I tried that recently on a new monitor I've got. So let's install that. Uh, so at the moment it won't let me install it because it says it's available for Windows. So I've got to go to compatibility and yeah, I'll just leave it as it is. So now if I go back, it will let me install it. And so we could do this within Windows, but the advantage of running it within Linux is that quite often you do get better frames per second. And you can go out of big picture mode. So if we go exit big picture mode, we'll leave Steam on because it's downloading. And show you how Linux runs on this. So let's minimize Steam. Let's go with Firefox as the web browser and BBC Sport. So you can see all of that is working just the same. Oh, the um, trackpad is the opposite way around. I usually do it where it, it mimics a tablet, so you push up on the trackpad and it goes up, but it's doing the opposite. You can change that in settings. So uh, if you were to type in trackpad or touchpad in this case, invert scroll direction. There we go. And what I like about KDE Plasma, which is watch on this, is you go to the top left-hand corner and it shows you the available windows that are open. So I can go back into Steam and I can check the progress of my game that's downloading. But we'll come back when that's done. So back in big picture mode. And when they talk about will it run Doom, they don't mean this version, they mean the old version. This is a remake of it, which looks way, way better. But it tends to run on systems that don't have a graphics card in them. So this is using integrated graphics. Now I've gone with just whatever it's picked as the default settings, but I may need to lower it down. So we've gone under 10 FPS at the moment. I'm definitely gonna to have to lower the resolution and the graphics settings. Yeah, it's still gone 1080, so I'm gonna drop that down to 720. That'll make a huge difference. We're gonna put everything low. I think that's probably enough to change. Let's save that. I can't look at the FPS because the game's too fast. But it actually feels somewhat playable. Right, there's a shotgun up here. That's better. Okay. Yes, 
Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Let's have a little run around. Oh, missed him. Yeah, it's very twitchy on the Xbox 360 controller. But as you can see, I'm moving around pretty well. Let's blow these up. Where are they all? They're all down there. Yeah, I'd rather it was faster, but it's still playable. And we can actually shut this down, so if we press the Xbox button, we can close the whole computer down from this. And I'm gonna put this Windows back inside it because I wanna try the dual screen setup. So the USB-C connection doesn't support display output, but if I plug in an HDMI cable, you can see that it recognizes dual displays. And at the moment it's mirroring the two, but if I right click and do display settings, I can then extend these displays. And you can tell it which one is which. So I'll do keep changes there, but I need to identify to see, yeah, they're the wrong way around at the moment. So I need to move that over to here and then apply. And then what I can do is drag from one screen to the other. This is a touchscreen monitor, so touchscreen is supported as well. So thanks very much to Ace Magic for sending me this laptop to test. The N150 really is a decent processor. I really like the 512 storage. That's more unusual these days. A lot of laptops are 256 or 128, and it's nice to have a big amount of storage on there. And also 16 gig of RAM is really good. I would rather it was DDR5, but it's certainly not a deal breaker at this price. Okay, so hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.